Good morning, children. Today we'll start with a new topic: the historical study of literature. Now, what does this mean? The historical study of literature. It means that what is the history of English literature? How did it came into emergence? What was the historical background? What 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 were its effects? How was it useful for the writers? And how did it created a huge impact on the evolution? Okay, look at the board. As we pass from individual books to their authors, so as we pass from books, suppose we are reading a book. Okay, definitely somebody has written that book. One or the other author has written that book. So while if we like the story, we definitely flip through the pages about the authors also. Okay, that who is the writer of the story or drama or fiction or novel, anything which. an individual is reading so we flip through the pages in order to study about the authors also so by an equally natural transition we pass from an individually author to the age in which he lived now see when we study about the author we not only study about that particular person but we also study about the age in which he has lived okay like in in which era did that author came into existence what was the uh, social uh, outcome of the society or the scenario of the society how was it so we get to know everything about the author from the writing which he has written okay to the age in which he belonged we cannot go far in our study of literature before we realize that it involves the study of history literature okay history of literature we cannot study literature until and unless we get to know that what is exactly the history of english literature how did that is what i said in the beginning of the lecture that how did uh, english literature came into form who were the people who helped in its development what what difficulties did he, did the writers of that period face how did they overcome those difficulties what was actually the social background of the society and how did it impacted on the people who were reading the books so this is absol this absolutely goes waste until and unless we study about the history of literature a great writer is not an isolated fact he has his affiliations with the present and the past okay whenever a, suppose a great writer if we take example of william shakespeare he is a very very great writer okay so we cannot hide any fact okay he is not an isolated fact means isolated means akela he is not the only one who is a alone truth that he is a writer we all know that he is a very famous writer and there were many writers of his age also he was not the alone one he has his affiliations with the present and the past now in his work we get to know about what he had in the past and what he is having in the present when he was alive and through these affiliations he lead us at a length to a sense of a national literature as a developing organism having a continuous life of its own okay now through these affiliations what is presented in his work it definitely leads us to a sense of national literature it tells us about what is national literature okay what as a means national literature in a kind of developing organism means suppose it is being compared the literature developing organism means when the literature is being compared to a child like as a child is born it it gradually grows it does not grow in a day or a year it takes years to grow okay so that is what literature has been compared to a developing organism that it has got a continuous life of its own yet passing in the course of its evolution through many varying phases just like a child as the child passes through different stages in his life 
इन्फेंट चाइल्डहुड देन ग्रोस टू मिडल मिडिल चाइल्डहुड देन टू एडोलसेंट एज देन इट बिकम्स यंग देन अ मैन देन एन एडल्ट मैन देन एन ओल्ड मैन सो दिस इज हाउ द एवोल्यूशन ऑफ अ ह्यूमन ऑर्गेनिज्म ग्रोज एंड इट गोज एंड वाइल ग्रोइंग इट पासिस थ्रू मेनी डिफरेंट फ्रेजेज फेजेज इन लाइफ ओके बड़ा होने के लिए बहुत से अलग चुनौती से गुजरना पड़ता है वैसे ही when the English literature was growing, it had to pass through many different challenges in its path. Thus, in our study of literature on the historical side, when we consider the study of literature on the basis of historical evidence, we shall have to consider two things. Now, two things are important when we study literature on the basis of historical background. Now, what are those two things? The continuous life or national spirit in it. Now. the growth has to be continuous the growth of english literature has to be continuous and the national spirit and nobody should fall weak in order to grow it everybody should have a unanimous spirit in it okay that we have to grow this subject and the varying phases of that and even though it passes through different phases of of that continuous life or the way in which it expresses the changing spirit of successive ages now even though the subject the subject that is the literature subject even though it passes through different phases to grow but it should not express the changing spirit of successive ages means as the age, different ages are coming different eras are coming it should not feel low to change or to express its ideas though there will be cha changes in centuries but it should not weaken its spirit to change it thank you